So what we're going to look at doing now, we've done our let by tightness test, so we're good with that. We're now going to look at working pressure. Now we know that working pressure is taken across multiple points of our installation. Always taken at our gas meter, okay, and obviously then it's taken at any subsequent appliances. Now what we're checking for here is pipe work is suitably sized to convey sufficient gas pressure to all appliances connected to it. Okay, so what we're going to do firstly is we're going to take the working pressure at our gas meter. So we're going to make sure that our um, emergency control valve is in the off position. And then again, we're going to check our um, U-gauge, our manometer, to make sure it's in good condition. And then we're going to connect that the same way we would do for a tightness test on a dead gas supply. Okay, so again, our gas is switched off. We're going to remove the test nipple. Remember, if your gauge has got inches water gauge and millibar, we need to make sure we're connecting to the correct side and we want to be working in millibar. So we've got our gauge connected. Now what we're going to do, we're going to fire the appliances up to a maximum rate. Now what we're then going to see is with the appliances running, how much gas pressure is being used. Okay. So for our cooker, maximum rate isn't all four burners, oven and grill, if applicable. It's for three largest burners, okay? So obviously we've got our gauge on. We're gonna open our gas supply out nice and slowly. Now what we're gonna do is come over to our cooker and we're gonna light the three biggest rings. About one there. Okay, they're all on. Remember for a cooker, it's only the three largest burners, okay? All other appliances in maximum rate specified, specified by the manufacturer. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna now go back to our gas meter and we're gonna see what the pressure is on our gauge. Like with any test we're using with our manometer, we wanna make sure that we are reading the same on both sides, okay? Now we've got 22 and a half at the top there and we've got 22 and a half millibar at the bottom there. Okay, working pressure, 21 millibar plus or minus a two, so anywhere between 19 and 23 millibar is acceptable working pressure at our gas meter itself. Okay, we just run it and we'll take the, take the reading when it stabilizes out. Okay, so we've got a working pressure at our gas meter of 22.5 millibar for our cooker. Now when you're designing, a, a gas installation, it wants to be designed such a way that there is no more than one millibar drop between the value we're recording here and any appliance connected to that installation. Okay, so if we've got 22 and a half millibar at our meter, we should have no less than 21 and a half millibar at our cooker itself, okay? So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna turn these off, we're gonna turn our gas supply off, we're going to safely remove our equipment and we're going to transfer it over to our cooker. Okay. So what we're going to do now, after we've done our test at our gas meter, we're now going to move to our appliance, our cooker. We've only got one test point here. Okay, so some of the other appliances do have two, working pressure, inlet pressure and burner pressure. We'll, We'll discuss that when we do our, our, our valves, our multifunctional valves at a later date. It's important to make sure you are on the correct test point. But the benefit with our cooker is it only has one, okay? So we don't have to worry about that. So again, our gas supply is off. Now because there is no localized um, point of isolation, we have to turn the gas supply off at our gas meter, our ECV. If there was an appliance isolation valve, such as on some of the other appliances in the bay, then we could turn the gas supply off there, absolutely fine to do that. So again, we're gonna remove the test nipple, put it in a safe place, put it on there, it's fine. And again, connect our hose to it. You can see the gauge is nicely supported because this is a point of weakness on the installation. We don't want to just have it leaning um, propped up next to the gas pipe. It might fall over and we could, we could actually get gas escaping. So let's just put the cooker back into some kind of position. You see the gauge. Okay, we're gonna open that back out. We've got it on so we can now turn our gas supply on nice and slowly. 
and we're going to light the three rings again. We had 22 and a half millibar at our gas meter. So that means that we should have no less than 21.5 millibar here. Okay, so again, we're looking at our gauge. We're gonna make sure we're reading the same on both sides of our gauge and we can adjust that if need be to make sure we're reading nice and accurately. So you see we've got 22 millibar on both sides of our, our gauge. So that is only a half a millibar difference between our appliance and our gas meter itself, okay? Which is an acceptable pressure drop. So any more than one millibar is not an acceptable pressure loss between the gas meter and any appliance, but we're only at half a millibar, so that's acceptable, okay? So we record our working pressure for our gas cooker of 22 millibar. Now there's not reference to manufacturing instructions for that, it's literally the difference between what we have at our gas meter and what we record at our appliance. So that's good, we can now take our gauge off, but remember, we always need to do that on a dead gas supply. So our emergency control valve, we're gonna switch back off. Okay. If, remember, as I said, if it has an appliance isolation valve, then we can use that, okay? Because obviously out in reality, the gas meter isn't necessarily gonna be right next door to the appliance you're, you're working with. Okay, so. Test nipple. Okay. Okay. okay, so gas is off. We're going to remove that. We're going to put that back in. Now remember, like with a test nipple on your gas meter, we do not over tighten these. Okay, it needs to be tight. We're going to check it with leak detection fluid once more, but we don't over tighten that. Okay, so what we're going to do now, the last little bit, it's just we're going to turn the gas supply back on nice and slowly and we are going to test that for leak detection okay just to make sure just to make sure that we put it in nice there's no bubbles on that so we accept that that has been made in nice and is forming a gas tight seal